Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about a problem from lead code. That is a hard problem. The problem name is jump game four. So I've already made a video on jump game one, jump game two and jump game three. They are like a single video in all of the three jump games are already made. So if you haven't like watched that video, I highly recommend to first watch that video out because that will, that video will also give you a lot of learning points. So let us now jump down to the jump game four. Okay, the problem statement goes like this, that you're given an array of integers AR and you are initially posi positioned at the first index of this whole array. Fine. Now in one step, you can jump from index I to I plus one if the array permits, like if there are more elements on the right side, you can also go to one step left that is I minus one and you can go to a particular J index such that the value of ARI and the value of ARJ is same, which means that let's say that you are on a block that is of value five. So you can move to any other block in that array that is also having the value five. Fine. So it's like you can teleport. So you have three types of moves you can do. You can either move one step ahead, one step back, or you can teleport to another block in that same array, which has the same value as the value you are upon currently. Now you have to minimize the number of steps you have to do. So that you have to reach the last like array of the index, uh, like, like last index of this whole array, sorry. And that's the whole problem. Now, how you can do that? Uh, you can pause this video. You can think over that, how you can solve this problem. But what you can see here is that greedy approach do not work here. Why? Because it can happen. Like it should not be like you can only go one step ahead because it can happen that maybe uh, you take one step. Okay. You are currently on, let's say five and you can teleport to one of the, another five, but let's say there is one more five that is too far from reaching the end. But let's say that you just move two steps ahead and then you can directly move to the last step. So it means that there are some sort of a DP or you have to some sort of store the states you have already iterated over, but can I directly use DP here? Yes, we can. But what you can also observe is that you have multiple options around it that you from one step, you can either go to the left or right or to teleport to some other point. So you have to also somehow know where are all the positions to which you can teleport to so that you can get the smallest amount of distance you can land upon. What I mean by this is let's say that. Okay. Let us take the example. Let's say that this is an array and you're currently on this point. Now, maybe you can just take uh, three steps to land upon this point or else what you can also have done is that you have gone to a different point and then it might have just taken two steps to land up on this point. So this is also like three steps, one, two, three, and this is also like one step, two step, three steps. So like they're equivalent. So you have to also somehow know key, what are the smallest steps that you can do. So in that scenario, what you can do is that you have to somehow keep track of the number of jumps you are doing at every point of time. What I mean by this is that let's say that you are doing some jumps one, two, three, you have landed upon this point of time, that point. Now what you can also see is let's say that I have also done this jump. So this value is five and this value is also five. So from five, you can either do this jump because this is the first point. You cannot go back jump or you can have done this, this jump. So both of these jump will take one amount, like one cost. Okay. So this will take one cost and this will take one cost. So now this is the least amount of moves required to, to get to this point. So let's say that this point is six. Okay. So this is the least amount of po like points because in any other way, let's say that if you, even if you take one more route to just directly come to this point, then also it will take more than or equal to this amount of uh, steps only. So whatever point you reach the first is the minimum amount of step it will take to reach that point because it cannot happen that later on you find out a point that is that is much more lessing. So whenever you're traversing the or finding out the least position for any one of the points, that is actually the least position only. Why? Because later on it it will not happen that you will land onto the same point again. Even if you land upon the same point, it will be taking more amount of steps to land upon that point instead of just taking small steps. So you have to also understand that you are you're that you just want minimum amount of steps only. Got it? So that is the overall logic here. You, ju you just have to store out the points. Now it, it all sounds very confusing to you, but what you can do here is that you can some sort of a make a queue. Now what you can do is you can first push the starting index. That is the zeroth index into the queue. And then, so from Q, like from zeroth index, you have three options. You have to also make a map. You can say 
that is storing out for every number, let's say that it is five, at what positions five is occurring. Let's say it's a six, at what position six is occurring. So that you know from any point of time, like from every point, which point I can reach to. Uh, so that because if there's also a thing that the same values you can directly move down to those points also. So you can also have to know which indexes I can directly go to. So if there are a couple of fives like this five and this one more five, so you know that you can reach this five or you can also reach this five in only one step. So that you can directly, like you can also like make a visited vector so that you can also store out this information key. Okay, the minimum amount of steps take to reach this point is like, you start from zero, so this is one. You can like reach this in one point, this is, you can also reach this in one point. So that you will not like find out the answer for this again because you know that this is the minimum answer because it will not happen key you again find out a route and it will get you in less than one positions. I hope you get the point. So that is why you have to somehow store these values also. And this is the DP value that you have to store out the minimum values to reach out these points. And from this point, let's say that you reach out this point and you want to, let's say reach out this point at a six. Now you directly reach down to this point. From this point, you can directly go to this point. So you know that you know that this point requires one move. So now this is just one plus one move that is two moves that is required. So from the queue, you can directly fill out the other boxes also. So, so this is one, this will also take two steps. And from the steps and this will require one step. So this will require two steps. This will require two steps because from this point, you can go to this point in minimum of one step only. Okay. So you can like some sort of use a queue to fill out the positions. And from this position, when you get these positions, you can like push these indexes in the queue because now I know that the minimum amount of steps required to get to this point are no, because I already know that you can get to this point by just one step and one step and one step. So you can like fill out these positions and push these indexes into the queue and then iterate over these points in, in, like again so that you can fill out for the whole thing and you will obviously will get the maximum or the like you have to reach the last index only so you will obviously will getting the minimum amount of steps required that you can get. So that's the overall logic for this problem. Let us go down to the code part. So what I've done here is that this is the first map that I actually created out that is uh, like that is a map of Q, but you can also make a map of vectors also. I just, uh, I just a fancy term to like use a Q also, but I'm just storing out what particular element is mapping to what indexes so that I can just directly trade over them. So it's just a map of integer to a vector. I just used Q, but you can use a vector also. That is that mapping out whatever a particular Q, like a particular index is at. Then I used a Q and this is the distance. That distance vector is just a DP vector that will store what is the amount of minimum distance or cost it'll take to reach down a particular point. This is the distance that I initialize the starting is zero that for the starting index, we don't have to require any cost because I land or start from the starting index. So it is zero and also push the starting index that is zero so that I will continue moving around the queue. So we'll move and do a while loop until our queue is empty. It's just sort of a BFS only. What you can understand is that I push out the first queue, like the first segment. If it is not the last index, like if it is a last index, we can directly quit at this point because we just want the last index. Why do we trade over all the other points also? Okay. Then we just break out of this point. Else what you can easily see here is that now we have three options either to either to move back front or to the same index. Now, if I just want to move back, then I should also ensure that there should be at least one element back to it also. So if I minus one is greater than equal to zero, which means that the left element exists. And if it is, it is not already visited out because I initialize my distance to be minus one, all, all are minus one, which means that I have not visited them. But whenever I move to some point, I will only check that if it is not visited, I will first mark out the distance. Okay. So from I minus one, you can reach that point by distance of I plus one, because you just only required one more step. And then you'll push out that particular index in the queue. So it means that from the particular element, which I cannot reach, I will first mark out the distance and then push that particular index into the queue so that I can again iterate over that. Similarly, I can do it for the right element that is I plus one and also for all the elements that are in the map. Okay. Because uh, that I can directly move down to. So I iterate over the map also all the elements that I can jump in one step, mark it out also pop it out from the queue. That is just a simple implementation. And just in the end, I will be printing out the distance required to reach the last index that is N minus one. So that is the overall logic. The code will be in the description of this problem. Don't worry. Thank you for watching this video till the end. I'll see you next one. See you next one. Till I keep coding and bye.